believe what I said. All right. So, anyways, um, so it says here, just to kind of recap, Mark McGuire had 70 home runs. Roger Maris had, um, what was it, 61? So, but Mark McGuire admitted to using steroids, okay? And so they give us the data and they say, well, was it better? Was it more? Was McGuire more impressive or was it steroids? Um, so let's do the Z score for both. So if I do the Z score, and, and the reason we're going to do the Z score is because the means are similar and the standard deviation is similar. So it's really hard to compare, right? The spread is smaller on one, but you have a higher mean. Um, you have a lower mean in 1961, but a higher spread. It really determines where Maris falls in that spread, right? So what we do is we're going to do the Z-score for Maris. I'm just going to put Z-score, M-A-R. And remember that the Z-score is Y. Whoops. This is not the easiest thing to write on. The Y score is Y minus mu over sigma. So now when I plug that in, I'm going to say, um, what was it, 61? Minus the mean, which would be 18.8, all over the standard deviation which is 13.37. Um, and so if we, oops, if I plug that into a calculator, um, the z-score is about 3.16. This thing is so... So now if we do the z-score for McGuire, what we're doing is we're standardizing the z-scores. We're, we're standardizing the data sets. Because really, truthfully, the, the numbers don't matter. We're really looking at the spread. And so the z-score tells us, and I'll, I'll, I'll draw a picture of this in a second, um, what, what we're really doing. Where Are they further from the mean or not? So he had 20. 0.7 um, minus, oh, I did that backwards. I got to put his number, how many home runs he had, right? Why is what he had? So we're going to say 70 minus 20. It's hard to talk and do math at the same time. Over the standard deviation, which for his era, 7.4. Now, if I plug that in the calculator, he's got 3.87. Now, standardizing this, what this does for us by standardizing this is we're thinking of a distribution. And standardizing this puts them both in the same distribution where the, mu the mean or the mu is in the center, right? And so the z-score is the distance from mu. So, <coughs> Maris is definitely, remember, a standard deviation or a z-score plus or minus 3 puts you way out at the end of this thing. But I'm exaggerating it so you can see it. So this is where Maris would be because he has a z-score of 3.16. Okay, but over here, that's where McGuire would be. <coughs> and he has a z-score of 3.87. 
So he's a little bit further ahead. And the question remains, so the, the numbers don't lie. Um, when we standardize things, we take the spread and all the information, when we use that z-score, it tells us the probability, the percentile that they live in. And so according to this, McGuire lives in a little bit higher percentile than Maris. So um, a couple of arguments that I mentioned earlier. One, does McGuire have an unfair advantage over Maris because he used steroids? Maybe. Maybe he does. But overall, a lot of the batters in, in McGuire's time, or McGuire's time the averages were higher, right? And a narrower spread. So if we were to look at the two separate distributions, um, McGuire is still a little bit slightly ahead of Maris, but the batters in his day had higher, higher averages, higher scores. That's why their average is higher. There's a lot of contributing factors. They played more games in 1998 than they did in 1961. So they had more opportunities at bat. This is a little bit ambiguous. It says at least 502 played appearances. So I don't know exactly how many plate appearances McGuire had compared to Maris. That's a factor. Or all the other batters. That's a factor. Uh, we can assume that maybe the pitchers were using steroids. We can assume all those things that I mentioned before. But the Z-score is saying that McGuire was a little bit ahead of Maris. And so it doesn't really prove that the steroids were the reason, but maybe it does. Okay? But that's the data. Okay? All right.